What are the craziest things 911 operators have ever heard? Is it sounds of someone being murdered, or perhaps the eerie voice of a ghost on the other line? The people who answer the phones when 911 is called are tasked with getting people the help they need. However, sometimes people just can't be helped. We're going to tell you about the most insane 911 calls ever made. Some will make you laugh because of how ridiculous they are. Others will make you cringe at how creepy some people can be. Just as a disclaimer, not every part of an operator's conversation with a caller is released to the public. In sensitive situations, large parts can be redacted, but we'll use what we have to reconstruct these conversations for you in this video. What you're about to witness are the scariest, funniest, and most insane 911 calls ever made. Let's start with a few light-hearted 911 calls before ramping it up to the more gruesome and terrifying stuff. It was a light night shift the caller had just gotten off work. As he drove home, he looked into the hills of the surrounding area. A faint glow appeared to be coming from the landscape in front of him. Startled, the driver pulled out his phone and immediately dialed 911. 911, what's the nature of your emergency? The operator asked. Hi, yes, I'm driving home from work and the hills in front of me are on fire. Have you received any calls or sent the fire department out yet? Asked the man. There was a slight pause as the operator checked the dispatch reports that had been given in the last few minutes. We have no calls about a fire, sir. Where are you located? The driver told the operator exactly where he was looking, but before he could finish what he was saying, the blaze seemed to increase tenfold. Oh my god, the man on the phone screamed. How is no one seeing this? The fire is getting bigger. The whole top of the mountain is on fire now. Sir, please stay calm. We're sending someone out to your location now, responded the operator, making sure to keep their voice level. If you're still driving, I'm going to ask you to pull over to the side of the road. Okay, but I can't believe what I'm seeing, the man exclaimed. It's so bright, the fire must be… The man stopped speaking for a second. Oh, oh god, he said quietly. I'm so embarrassed. There's no fire, it's just the sun rising over the hill. I just got off work and I'm not normally out this late. I'm so, so sorry for wasting your time. The operator listened intently. It's fine, sir. I will cancel the dispatch. Thank you for calling and have a good morning." The operator hung up. This mistaken caller confused the rising sun with a blazing inferno. However, that was not the only time someone called 911 because they mistook a celestial body for something it wasn't. Take this 911 call, for example. One British man was standing on his lawn looking at the night sky when a bright circular object appeared above him. He scrambled for his phone and called 911. I need to report a UFO, the man frantically said to the operator. Look up in the sky. I'm grabbing my camera and heading back out, but I just wanted to let the authorities know aliens might be invading us. Before the operator could respond, the man hung. They traced the call back to an elderly gentleman in town. They were about to dispatch a squad car to his address just to check on him when the line lit up, signaling an incoming call. The operator picked up and asked how they could help. Hi, I had just called about a UFO, said a familiar voice on the other line. I just wanted to call and let you know everything's fine. I don't know how to say this, but it was just the moon. Sorry to have wasted your time. These lighthearted stories of mistaking one object for another are fun to hear, but the job of an operator can also be incredibly stressful and terrifying. These next several 911 calls will send chills down your spine. One operator in a small town was connected to an old woman who called 911 a few times a week to ask for help. Her husband had recently passed away, and she needed help with basic things like turning up the thermostat or boiling water for tea. The operator would do their best to help her and would even send a squad over on quiet days to lend some assistance. Over time, the elderly woman began to develop dementia. She would call 911 more and more frequently. She began to believe that when she called the operator for help, it was really her deceased husband she was talking to. Then something weird happened. Hi, Mrs. Jones, said the operator when he picked up the phone. He recognized the number on the other line. How can I help you today? You need to come home. I need your help. Please come home, the old woman responded. I will send someone out to help you, Mrs. Jones. Just remain calm and an officer will be there in a few minutes. The operator dispatched one of the local law enforcement officers. He apologized that they'd have to head to the house yet again. It was a slow day, so the officer said it was no trouble. That was until he got to the house. When the officer knocked on the door, no one responded, so he let himself in to check on the old woman. He found her lying dead in her bed. She had passed away relatively recently, but it had been long enough for rigor mortis to set in. However, the operator had talked to the old woman less than an hour before. The officer explained this strange discrepancy by stating the room was only around 50 degrees when he walked in, which led to the body becoming stiff more quickly, but the whole thing was still unsettling. A few days went by when the operator received a call. He reached for the phone and his hand froze in midair. He recognized the number of the caller. It was from that old woman's house. He tentatively picked up the phone and placed it to his ear. 911, what's the nature of your emergency? He said with a shaking voice. I need your help. Please come home and help me, the old woman's voice said, and then the line went dead. 
The operator dispatched officers to the house, but no one was there. The operator would receive that same call from the woman periodically for the next year, even after the house was vandalized and eventually burned down. The ghost calls kept coming in. Law enforcement contacted the phone company to see if there was an explanation. They confirmed that the line at the house had been disconnected and that there was no other address using that phone number at the time. As creepy as the old woman ghost calling 911 is, that is nothing compared to what this next operator went through on one of their calls. It was a cold winter night. The wind was howling, causing the temperature to plummet well below freezing. On these types of nights, calls to the operator were typically non-existent as no one wanted to go outside. Around 3 a.m., a call came in. 911, what's the nature of your emergency? The operator asked. I need help, please. My sister is possessed by a demon, the voice on the other line said frantically. She tried to cut my heart out while I was sleeping and I just barely got away. I locked myself in the bathroom, but she's trying to break in. Sir, I'm going to need you to calm down and tell me exactly what's going on, the operator responded. They were trying to figure out what was actually happening. My sister is possessed by a demon, the caller screamed. Please, you have to send help. Okay, I'm sending help, but I need to know if you need the police, an ambulance, or both, the operator said. As they listened for a response, they could hear what sounded like nails scratching against wood and someone banging on a door. Please, whispered the man on the phone. There really is a demon in my sister's body. I've been battling it for days. It got free from the chains. Before he could finish his explanation, the man was cut off by a guttural voice that started taunting him from the other side of the bathroom door. The creature began speaking in a language that the operator couldn't understand, but with each demonic phrase it spat out, it sounded like the creature was gurgling blood. The operator stayed on the line with the caller until the police arrived at the house. The operator listened as police crashed through the front door. The creature let out an otherworldly screech and then the line went dead. The operator was shaking. Next to him was a supervisor who'd been called to listen in while the strange screams and voices could be heard on the other line. His face was pale. He stared far off in the distance, unable to believe what he had just heard. When their shift ended, the operator and his boss called the police headquarters to ask what they had found at the house. The answer they received would haunt their nightmares for the rest of their lives. When the police arrived, they found the sister in bloody handcuffs. Her whole body was covered in scratches. One of her eyes had popped a blood vessel and was bright red. Her skin was white as snow and her clothing torn to shreds. The sister was restrained and brought to a psychiatric hospital for evaluation. The brother had not been lying about what she'd been trying to do. EMTs found that the brother had deep lacerations on his chest, as if someone was literally trying to dig his heart out. After that, the case went cold. The operator never found out what happened to the brother or the sister. However, he can still hear the demonic voice from the other line even to this day. Not all terrifying 911 calls are supernatural in nature. Some of the most insane calls come from people who have done really bad things. One operator had the misfortune of talking to Charles Hendricks Foster when he called, threatening to kill his wife. 911, do you need the police, fire department, or ambulance? The operator asked. Um, yes ma'am, this is very serious. I'm gonna stab my wife in the chest. She's driving me crazy and is sitting right next to me. This is very serious, stammered Charles Foster. Sir, please calm down and explain exactly what's happening. It's hard to hear you. Can you put yourself on speakerphone? The operator asked. While she conversed with Foster, she informed the police that they needed to get to his house as fast as possible. Charles Foster's wife might have been in grave danger. I need you to send the police right away. This is very serious. If the police don't get here soon, I'm going to stab my wife. She is driving me crazy. Charles Foster continued. He hung up the phone. The operator sat in her seat, stunned at what she had heard. Then the light signaling an incoming call lit up. The operator quickly picked up as she recognized it was Charles Foster again. This is very serious, he said again. I'm about ready to kill my wife. This is not a joke. I need you to shut up and listen to me. The operator continued to stall for a long time as police raced to Foster's home. She asked him if he'd been drinking or was on drugs. He answered that he hadn't been drinking or using drugs. He said he was just crazy and needed to go to jail for thinking about murdering his wife. The operator asked him to repeat and spell his name to keep him busy. Foster showed signs of agitation. He shouted and cursed but spelled his name anyway. Each question from the operator was a ploy to keep him busy. I want to hurt my wife. I don't want to hurt anyone else, Foster exclaimed. The operator told him she heard what he was saying and told him the police were on the way. Foster said that was good. She then convinced Charles Foster to step out of the house and wait for the police outside where they could talk. He agreed and went outside. When police arrived on the scene, they arrested Charles Foster on his lawn and then burst into the house. They found Foster's wife stabbed in the chest. The cops rushed over to her and found that she was still breathing. Paramedics were brought in and were able to stabilize Foster's wife. She was rushed to the hospital where she recovered from the stab wounds in her chest. This next 911 call might be the saddest and most tragic thing you've ever heard. It'll be hard to listen to, so prepare yourself. In 2012, Jake Evans called Texas law enforcement to report a crime that he had committed. When the operator picked up, they had no idea they would be dealing with a tragedy that would shock the nation. 
The voice on the other line was that of a detached teenager. Jake Evans showed no signs of panic or remorse. He explained in a monotone voice exactly what he had done and why he was calling. Hi, I'm calling to report a murder I committed. I lured my sister out of her room by telling her that mother wanted to speak to her. When she came out, I shot her multiple times. She fell down the stairs screaming. The operator couldn't believe what they were hearing. At first, it seemed like a prank, but as Jake continued to speak, the tone of his voice and grisly details became all too real. He explained that after he shot his sister, he went to the kitchen and shot his mother. After that, he picked up the phone and dialed 911. Jake continued explaining what had occurred to the operator. I wasn't even really angry with them. It just kind of happened. I've been kind of planning on killing them for a while now. The tone of his voice never changed as he continued talking to the operator. I know what I did was wrong, but I was going to kill someone. It could have been anyone. I know I'm evil, and I understand that the police will want to hurt me when they get here. The operator kept Jake talking until law enforcement arrived and arrested him. They found the bodies of his sister and mother shot to death in the house. The events appeared to have unfolded exactly as Jake described them. When the operator got off the phone, they needed to step out for a very long time. This is a good place to take a breather and thank all the people who answer 911 calls and get people the help or assistance they need. Operators deal with this extremely tense situation and have to remain level-headed while talking to frantic and sometimes insane people. Before we dive back into the heavy stuff, let's hear some of the crazier calls 911 operators have received that don't end in tragedy. It can be difficult to get away with robbery in today's day and age. However, one burglar in Ohio pretty much caught himself. The man broke into someone's home and started stealing whatever he could get his hands on. Where, in a stroke of bad luck, the burglar managed to butt dial 911 while still in the house. The call went something like this 911, what's your emergency? The operator received no response and could hear stuff being moved around in the background. Hello, is anyone there? They asked again, but got no response. As protocol dictated, the operator dispatched a squad car to the house. When the burglar saw the lights flashing outside, he ran and hid in the closet. The police officer entered the house and began to look around. The burglar remained silent, hoping the police would find nothing out of the ordinary and just leave. Then his phone started beeping in his pocket. The low battery alert had gone off. The police heard the noise and ordered whoever was hiding in the closet to step out with their arms raised. The burglar had no other choice. He sighed and came out with his arms up. The police arrested him and confiscated the phone that had given him away. This was a textbook example of what not to do when trying to rob a house. Another burglar knowingly called 911 while robbing a house. You won't believe what led him to turn himself in. A Romanian man needed some extra cash, so he decided to burgle a house in his town. As he rummaged through the rooms, he began hearing sounds. The floorboards creaked and something seemed to be scratching from inside the walls. The burglar became more and more freaked out. He continued to look around, trying to find the most valuable things to steal, when he heard a terrible hissing and shrieking sound. He was so scared that he dialed 112, the equivalent of 911 in the US. The operator picked up and asked what the nature of his call was. The man explained that he was in someone else's house and he was sure there was something otherworldly in there with him. He was almost positive it was some sort of ghost or demon, and he needed help. This was an odd request, but the police were dispatched. When they entered the home, they found the robber with his flashlight darting back and forth across the room. He explained what he was doing and that the house wasn't his and he was arrested. When the police searched the home, they didn't find any ghosts or paranormal entities. Instead, they found a cat. The robber called 112 in terror because a cat had been meandering around the house making noise. Sometimes you try to be a good neighbor, but do more harm than good. Everyone makes mistakes, including one woman from Canada who called 911 when she thought her neighbor was in distress. It had been a quiet night just like any other when the woman heard yelling coming from the apartment next door. Worried that her neighbor was in danger, she called the authorities. What's the nature of your emergency? Do you need police, fire department, or medical assistance? The operator asked. Hi, send help, quick. It sounds like my neighbor is in trouble. They're yelling and screaming. I think someone might have broken in or they're in a fight, the woman said. Please stay on the line, I'm dispatching the police, the operator told her. When the police arrived, they knocked on the door. After a few moments, a man opened it. They questioned him about the yelling and loud noises. He offered for the officers to come inside his apartment so they could speak privately. After a short conversation, the police officers left the apartment. The man closed the door behind them. The officers looked at one another and began to laugh. They stifled their giggles and proceeded out of the apartment building. Apparently, there was no break-in. The man wasn't in any danger. He was just a little constipated and was having a difficult time going to the bathroom. To be fair, it's better to be safe than sorry. Law enforcement encourages you to contact them if you think something's wrong, even if it only turns out to be your neighbor having a tough time on the toilet. 
If you call the police because someone has broken into your house, it might be a good idea to do a quick sweep to make sure your house is the way you want it when law enforcement arrives. One man in Lincoln, Nebraska called the authorities when he came home to find that his house had been broken into. He discovered that one of his favorite hookah pipes had been stolen, and he was furious. Without giving it much thought, he called 911 and had the police come so he could file a report. Unfortunately, he forgot to do a little cleaning up beforehand. When the police arrived at the man's address and entered his house, they immediately spotted illegal marijuana plants growing in his house. They arrested the man for growing drugs in his domicile, even if it had been burgled by someone else. In one day, the man had lost his favorite pipe, his pot plants, and his freedom. Some 911 calls are just plain tragic. Sometimes there's nothing anyone can do, and the operator has to stay on the line while the person who calls slips right through their fingers. Deborah Stevens was driving a car delivering newspapers on a regular route when inclement weather caused a flash flood. She took a detour to try to finish her deliveries, but things went from bad to worse really quickly. While traveling down a side road, water levels began to rise. Deborah didn't exactly know where she was, but she knew she was in big trouble. She pulled out her cell phone and called 911. Yes, my name's Deborah Stevens and my car is stuck in a flash flood. The water's rising and I can't get out. I don't know where I am. Please, you have to save me. The operator tried to help her calm down, but the situation was dire. Without knowing where Deborah was, they couldn't send rescue units to help her. As the operator tried to figure out the car's location, Deborah became hysterical. The water's rising in my car. I'm scared. I don't want to die. Please help me. Deborah screamed. The operator frantically tried to dispatch the fire department to the area around Deborah's normal paper route to try to locate her. However, the entire area had been flooded and most roads were impassable. The operator stayed on the phone as long as they could, but as Deborah yelled the water was rising above her head, the line went dead. About an hour after Deborah called for help, the fire department located her car, which was now completely submerged underwater. They pried the doors open only to find Deborah's drowned body stuck inside. They desperately tried to revive her, but to no avail. The flash flood had consumed her car and taken her life. Deborah's story isn't the only tragedy that happened in a car while a 911 operator was on the phone. Chris Lestrella made a 50-second phone call to 911 as the car he was in with his sister, brother-in-law, and niece sped down the freeway. The car's accelerator had jammed and there was no way to slow it down. The car reached its top speed and careened down the road as Chris pleaded for help. Please send help, Chris said to the operator. We're out of control and can't stop. The odometer says we're going 120 miles per hour. OK, Chris, I'm sending the police and ambulance towards your location. Try to avoid any major intersections and pull off the road if you think it's safe. But as the operator tried to keep everyone calm, screams could be heard over the receiver. Oh God, we're going to hit that car, a voice yelled. Hold on. There was a gut-wrenching sound of twisting metal and the screams of people inside the car before the line went dead. The operator connected to the first responders that had been dispatched to find out what had happened. The out-of-control Lexus had entered an intersection and hit another car. This sent the vehicle with Chris and his family inside it through a fence and over an embankment. When first responders arrived on the scene, the car was in flames. The fire department put out the inferno and pried the doors off the mangled car. All four people inside died from blunt force trauma. The 911 operator was the last person to hear their screams before they were silenced forever. Again, we just want to take this opportunity to thank all 911 operators, first responders, and anyone else who dedicates their lives to helping others. Whenever they start their shift, they never know what the day will have in store for them. These stories were just a taste of what these heroic people deal with every day at their jobs. Now watch what actually happens when you call 911, or check out Most Insane Plan to Escape Death Row.